Welcome everyone. This is a video uh, focusing on the Ford Model A carburetor, which is a Zenith carburetor. And while I could spend many hours going over all the details and intricacies of the Zenith carburetor, I'm focusing this video today on how do you get a nice uh, low idle with your carburetor in your Ford Model A. And so I'm gonna focus on the upper part of the carburetor. So I took the bottom part off. Um, and I'm gonna focus on the throttle plate, which goes in here, and also this uh, throttle shaft, which goes into the body here. Uh, these are two areas that um, if you overlook them, uh, can cause your Model A either to idle rough or not idle at low, uh, not idle well at low RPM at all. And uh, it's one of those things where, it, in my opinion, the fun things in Model A, like the, so the first thing is the horn, right? You gotta have a working horn on your Model A, the Yuga, right? But the, I'd say right behind that is, it's really cool to set your timing retarded all the way, idle the throttle and it just has this uh, maybe if I have a chance tomorrow I'm out I'm, I'm inside right now uh, a Model A idling at low RPM with retarded touches it's a cool sound it just sounds really cool so I'll have to get that on video for you anyway how do you get that sound uh, so I'm going to focus first when you take the top of your carburetor off of your Zenith uh, first thing I recommend is uh, you take, there will be a jet in here. This is the idle jet. Uh, there are several jets in the carburetor. Easy way to remember the idle jet is it's close to where the idle plate is, throttle plate here. So uh, you want to take this off because there's a chance you can bend it. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> but to risk not bending your idle jet, uh, you want to just take that out right away. Also, um, I'm going to point out a few things. You want to clean up the carburetor parts as much as possible. So you don't have to repaint everything for this job, but definitely like the inside here, which is machined out, you wanna clean that with metal cleaner. Uh, I have like a, a chrome or metal polish. You wanna clean that really well because you'll be fitting parts in here. Um, and you'll notice something, we'll get to this later. If you look inside, uh, this uh, body here of the upper part of the carburetor, you'll see a little, do you see a little hole right there, that little dot hole? This is gonna play a part in you setting a proper low RPM idle. That tiny hole, uh, depending on how your throttle plate is set, by the way, what is a throttle plate? This is a plate. And we'll talk about how it goes in here and how it fits, and you wanna fit this well. And we'll go over that in a second. But you want to position a throttle base. So this tiny little hole is covered about halfway when you got everything adjusted. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems with a uh, low RPM idle in your car. Um, and real quick, just for uh, educational purposes, and get a brighter light. Uh, this idle jet is, that light's not gonna come out well. Um, this is not a s original one, it's an aftermarket one. But for ones that are original, you can see, I happen to have one or two here. They'll have numbers stamped in them. And, and for the idle jack, I think it'd be like 10, 11, or 12. This one is 12. So I don't, I don't know if you're gonna get the focus in here or not. But that has a little number stamped. Oh, maybe you get that right there. No, sorry, my camera's not good at low uh, close in. Anyway, you may see a number stamped on your jet. Uh, that's an original jet, so if you have one of those and it works okay, you wanna hold on to that. And then I got another one that's, uh, this is 11. You might be able to see this one a little bit better. Maybe not. Ah, sorry, can I get that in focus? Okay, anyway, you have to trust me. That has a number stamped on there and it says 11. Ah, anyway, um, so, First thing is checking your throttle shaft. So a common thing that happens to the Zenith carburetors, they wear out over time is, so these are brass, right? Brass is a softer metal than this cast steel, cast iron. So 
when this is in here over time, the throttle shaft will wear before the body of the carburetor, which is a good thing. You want that, you know, <laughs> you'd rather have that happen. So a common problem is you'll get an air gap in here. You get a vacuum leak in this throttle shaft here where it slides in the carburetor. So one way to tell, it's very slight, but I'll be quiet for a second. If you try moving it and you hear it click or move, any movement, that's not good. So let's see if you can hear this. It's hard to hear, but um, there is slight movement. So this one uh, is a bit worn out. Um, I thought this other one was a better fit, it turns out. So it's, it's better, so if I put this in, um, there's not as much play, but there is, I can, I can feel it, wait. So you can hear that too. So I'm gonna have to probably get a new throttle shaft. I thought this one was okay, but it, it's, even though it's better than that one, uh, this one probably needs to get replaced too. So anyway, when this goes in, these two holes right here, this is your throttle plate. So the first lesson here, the, the first thing to keep in mind is make sure your throttle shaft, when it's in your carburetor, your Zenith, that there's no play. It should be solid in there because if you have a vacuum leak in here, that's going to cause problems when you're trying to idle or just in general operating your Model A. Okay, so now second thing is um, I got two plates here. So... One of these is original. You see the stamp on it? It says uh, 18 there. So this is an original one there. Uh, this is an after, now aftermarket ones are fine, but this doesn't have any. I put a little T for top there, but this doesn't have any stamp on it. So as typical with reproduction parts, they don't always fit as well as the originals, right? So the second thing you want to do to try to get that nice low idle with your carburetor is when this plate is in here, you want to have it so that when it's fitted in here on the throttle shaft, oh shit, hold on, I knew this was going to cause me problems. All right, so before I put it on the shaft, I try to just fit it manually. And so one thing you can do, well, first of all, you'll feel if it's a smooth fit or not. It should be really a smooth, nice fit. I'll talk about the bevels in there in a second. Uh, the other thing you can do to test is you take a flashlight and you hold it, you hold it basically under and you look for light coming through. So this will be hard to see, but uh, that's not going to work out well. So what you want to do is see if there's any gap. You want, you don't want any gaps. Now, reality is, let me see. A little bit there and a little bit down there. You don't want any gap at all, but the reality is really to get this fitted perfect like that is, is pretty, you know, that's going to be difficult. Now, that fits pretty good, um, but let me put this aside. This aftermarket part, when I put this in here, um, and again, it goes a certain way, right? They always go in. They, this plate won't be completely horizontal. It'll always be at a tilt because it's on that shaft. And it only turns one way. It doesn't turn 360. It only goes one way. So when I hold this over and look inside, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's a lot more light coming through. So what that means is around the edges, more light means there's more gap, right? Now, these, let me get this out of the way for a second. Now these throttle plates have a bevel in them. So what that means is on the edge, if I look at the edge, there's like an angle or a bevel. And because it sits in the throat of the carburetor, when it goes like this, it's angled one way on the top and the other way on the bottom. It's hard to see in the video if I get it up close, but I drew a picture instead. So imagine this throttle plate is in the body of the carburetor. It sits like that, a little offset, right? If you look, it's got a little angle this way, so it goes flush and nice against uh, the inside of the carburetor here, the throat. 
And this other side, the other, the back end of this throttle plate is angled here. And so what happens is when it's open, it's vertical, but like when it closes, those angles, the angle here lets a, it gives it a better seal inside your carburetor than without that angle, it's not gonna have as good of a seal. Okay, you got that? All right, so what I'm gonna do next is, um, and real quick, you can also test this before you screw it back on. So what you can do is you can, you can put your throttle shaft in here. And again, make sure you wanna back off. You see this screw here, this idle adjustment screw? You wanna back it off all the way off this nut while you're adjusting because this can like uh, mess up your setting in the throttle plate while you're doing it. So back this all the way out. Okay, then inside here, those two holes are where the screws will go in. So let's start with the good plate first, or the, the better, I should say the better fitting plate. So what you do is just flip that here, there's a little notch right there, it goes in, slide it down, and without screwing it in, just try to fit it in. Oh, and another reason you wanna clean this, you also wanna clean, in addition to cleaning the inside, use your metal polish on this, because you want everything to slide as easy as possible, because this is, already difficult as it is. You don't want to make it harder on yourself. So what I'll do is I'll slide this down a little bit and those holes are almost aligned. Okay, so I don't have it screwed in yet, but you can see I got the holes aligned there pretty well and I've got the plate closed. You want it in the full closed position. You want to do your little light test again. So let's do that. Again, on the edge at the bottom looks okay. The top, there's a slight ring there, but that's not too bad. You want to get it as close as you can, but it won't be perfect. Um, so this flashlight test is good to tell you if you have any gaps, and we'll talk about what to do if you do have gaps. So, you know, that's a pretty good fit. I can make it fit a little bit better with some sanding and filing. If we look at the other throttle body, sorry, other throttle plate here, Again, same thing, you wanna get that lined up with the holes. It can be difficult. This one's even more difficult because it doesn't fit. <sighs> Damn. It doesn't, uh, it's just more difficult. So again, get it in the closed position, get the holes lined up. And that looks closed, right? It looks okay, but if you do the light test, um, it's got a lot more, <laughs> see even the video, that's got a lot more, there's a lot more gap, and there's gap in the, can you see the gap in the bottom too? Um, anyway, there's a lot more gap around there that, so what do you do about that, right? So uh, what you do is you look and see where there's no light, that's where the, it's touching, and you know, on mine it looks like it's on the sides. So what you do is, what I can do is slightly file this or sand it on the edge. This is brass, right, so it's soft. Uh, but I also want to make sure I keep this angle as well. So I want to make sure I have a smooth angle bevel here on this. And again, you want to make sure you get the, <laughs> go with the angle there, right? It's angled like that for a reason, because again, it's, I'm sorry, it's angled like that for a reason, because it's going to like move like this in the carburetor. So actually here, does this help if I do it, um, yeah, outside is much easier. So if I, uh, come here. All right, so it's only gonna go, like when you pull the throttle, it's only gonna go one way, right? It doesn't spin, the, the throttle plate doesn't spin 360, so it only moves in a limited range. And so that's why you wanna make sure also as you're trying to clean and fit this better to keep the angle. So what I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna try to make this after reproduction one fit a little bit better but if I can't make it fit better, I'm just gonna go with uh, this original one here. So, uh, and even this one, I could try to make it fit a little bit better. So I'm not gonna videotape me sanding and filing this, but, uh, I'm, and again, another tip is, go slow when you do this, do a little bit, then fit it, a little bit, adjust, fit it. Don't take off huge amounts at a time, because when you take it off, you can't put it back on when it's metal, right? So just do it a little bit at a time, Use your flashlight trick right here to shine through the bottom uh, and see where the gaps are and just go from there. Okay. Okay, useful tip as you're starting to lightly 
sand or file your throttle plate to fit better into the throat of your Zenith carburetor is uh, get a pen. Uh, I tried a pencil and it doesn't work as well, so just you know get an ink pen like a Sharpie or something. Do the light trick again. You hold the carburetor, I'm sorry, you hold, yeah, you hold the light underneath and you look for the high points. So for example, uh, it's not going now, why is it? Oh, because I'm not over it, there we go. Um, there's like a, you see the high point there touching the edge? I marked that with the ink marker, do you see? So now if I bring it out and I take this out, Sorry about that. If I take it out, you can see where I marked. So now I, it's easier for me. I'm going to focus on that little area because that was a high point to have it fit inside the carburetor better. So still sanding and filing. Again, go very light, a little bit at a time. Already in just a few minutes, uh, it's getting better. It's not where it needs to be, but I can feel improvements already. And I've also helped, I beveled, uh, I sharpened the edges a little bit on the side, you can't see, but, well actually can you see, they're a little bit shiny, you can't really see, oh maybe there, but uh, didn't go severe, not really, but just trying to like just sharpen or help out those beveled edges as well. To give you an idea of how I'm filing and sanding, uh, I am using a vise, a bench vise, so you could do it by hand. I could hold that by hand and hold the file, but I think this is a better controlled way to file. So those are my ink marks right there from the, and what I do is like, that's a high point. So I just kind of like, I file, I do this with two hands, but like I do it on a curve. Wait, here we go, like that, is that better? I kind of do it like at it. I kind of follow the curve as I file it. So I don't just, file it in a flat, you don't want a flat spot, you want this to stay round. So as you file it, you just kind of go around the curve of the throttle plate. And so just, you know, slow and steady, see some progress against that ink mark. And then um, I've got sandpaper later, so as i finishing up, this is kind of more as I'm cleaning, finishing up, uh, just do finishing touches with some uh, sandpaper. Not heavy grit, like, you know, Two, three, four hundred is probably fine. And I'm making good progress that way. Again, just go slow. Okay, I finished up work on the throttle plates and uh, I ended up going with the original part here that's stamped. Now, this reproduction part, I was able to sand it, mark it. I got it fitting better. It definitely fit better than before. So that effort is worthwhile, but at the very end when I compared these two, this one still fits a lot better. So when I do the flashlight test and I shine it through, uh, basically less light comes through here. It's a tighter fit. Again, not 100%, I mean, you'll see some light, I think, around there no matter how well it fits, but that's why I ended up going with this. So the final steps to adjust this is, now notice I have uh, the screws in there now. See the screws in there? So the final step is, what you'll do is, you will just loosen, don't take them out, but you'll loosen both the screws that are holding the plate into the throttle shaft. Can I zoom in a bit? Then you want to, like you want to press this plate, like press that plate, use the arm, why is this so blurry? Uh, press this all the way down. So as tight as you can, tight. Then while you're holding it in place, go ahead and tighten the screws in, which I will do now. Don't strip them, make sure you got a screwdriver that fits properly. Okay, and then I'm not gonna Sorry, taking a little longer than I thought, so I might tighten them one last. I'm just going to just get them decent. All right. Good. Uh, 
one last light check. So, you know, if we hold this in here, I, I have no idea why uh, this is just uh, really not focused as well. So one more time, let me, okay, so lock that in. Still blurry, sorry, but um, you'll just have to trust me that, you know, from my, oh wait, will that work? It, it's definitely, most of the light is being, but there's a little bit I can see around the edges. I could try to touch up a little bit more, but for the most part, that's, that's about as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> so, sorry the, um, man, just have to get a new camera for these videos. Okay, and then the last step is, do you see this uh, idle screw here? So what you'll do is, you're gonna screw this in to the post. So this has a little screw here. And you're gonna just do it enough to, remember I said earlier in the beginning of the video, there's a little hole in this throat here. See that, I got a little pointer. So see that hole right there. What you wanna do is you're gonna adjust this screw here so that it backs off the plate just to expose that like half Way, like the whole halfway. So if you look, I'll adjust it and see that little hole just pop in there. You want to adjust it till it's like half open and then tighten the screw down. And that'll be your final adjustment. Please focus. Come on. Ah, okay. Oh, that's horrible. Okay. So there, finally there. Just again, halfway hole. And that'll be this screw right here. This is your air mixture screw right here. That's different from your adjusting the throttle plate idle. So this screw is different than this screw here, which adjusts the air mixture. So don't get those two mixed up. Anyway, if you do this, hopefully your Model A will idle much better at low RPM. And I'm gonna to try to throw one last video of the car idling at low RPM, because it's great to hear. All right, thank you for watching. Okay, this is what a Model A engine sounds like at very low RPM. Let's go here, the tailpipe. Isn't that a cool sound? So if you get Everything adjusted properly, uh, including the carburetor, you can get this nice low idle, just barely, and I'm sure people can get it lower than this. This is pretty good, but uh, I'm sure people can get the RPMs even lower than that. So hopefully you can get to this point as well.